We are Von Hala Adventures and we live in our tiny home on wheels, a ProMaster van named Beatrice. We started this journey in an effort to live more intentionally and closer to nature with less stuff, but more experiences. Through our journeys this past year, much of our outlook on life has changed. We're so grateful for the tiny house movement and what it's given us. Today, we're excited to share with you the first ever intentionally designed tiny house and the start of where it all began. What's up, everyone? As you can see, I am super stoked for today. We are on our way to Walden. Pod. So we're gonna take you on a little adventure. I think we're just gonna kind of do a little day trip just in the, the area. We're just gonna kind of see what happens. For you. I am so excited. I wanted to do this for years. That's just kind of crazy because you used to live here. Brian used to live in Boston. I went to college in Boston and we used to come to Walden Pond all the time. One time we lit on the beach of Walden Pond up at like 2 in the morning and stared at a meteor shower all night. I think it was about 30 degrees. It was freezing but we had a good that time. That would be so <laughs> amazing. <laughs> it was an experiment in simple deliberate living. In those days, you would have wanted to show you were successful by how much you could acquire. Um, very uh, materialistic point of view. Um, your wife would be dressed in better clothes than the neighbors and you'd build a bigger house. So yeah. he thought he wanted to see if he could just front the essentials of life. So he was actually the first tiny house advocate in that he wanted That's smaller. So cool. So That's today, cool. On the Tiny House Nation, their first house is Henry's house. Wow. That's so fascinating. We wow. live in a tiny house. We live in so. a van. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was super cool. We yeah. were passing by a replica of Henry David Thoreau's house, and some woman just happened to be working there, even though it's closed. So we got to peek in, talk to them, so learn a few things. That was really cool. Yeah, that was interesting. Yeah. I, I had... didn't realize that Henry David Thoreau's house is listed as basically the first tiny home living. Yeah, yeah, that's amazing. So he was like a founder of the tiny home movement, yeah. she was saying. It's crazy. Because he wanted to be closer to nature and not have all these extravagant comforts and really rely on material possessions, which is so awesome, so relate to that. And that also he was renting, I did not know this, but he was renting the land from Ralph Waldo Emerson yeah. when he lived here. And so Emerson's house is really close. So we're gonna see if we have time to go to that and show you all today. That is so cool. Yeah, that was good. Oh my gosh, you guys, I'm like so excited. The water is crystal clear. It's just like the writings and it's so nice and peaceful here and I love it. And I'm so excited to share it with all of you. The replica house that, that we just showed you all was actually moved from the original site back in the 1800s. So we're gonna go check out the original site of where the cabin was. It's just super cool to me to think that the first tiny house was here and it was by Henry David Thoreau. Like I'm still 
like super not bad. Yeah. I just think it's super cool because it really sparked what is a huge movement now. And I know a lot of you that watch this are either in vans, schoolies, or really interested in being part of the tiny house movement. And I think that's just, it's just so incredible because you really do live closer to nature and you really realize how much less stuff you you do need. We have a couple more stops on this tour. And the next one is one I am pretty excited about. If any of you are Little Women fans, movie, book, whatever that might be, you're gonna love our next stop. And I'm so stoked about it. I don't think Brian's as excited as I am about this one, but it's gonna be pretty cool. So for those of you that are little women fans, we are at the Orchard House. This is the home of Louisa May Alcott, who is the author of Little Women. This is where she wrote and where Little Women was set in, where she grew up. So this is amazing. This is so cool. I've, I'm a huge fan, so. It is closed right now, but you can at least walk around. So they've been having visitors. You can walk around and stuff. So, and you can peek in the house, they said. This house is so close. This is what, be five minutes away from Walden Pond? Yeah, about five minutes. And like Ralph Waldo Emerson's house, which we're gonna go to next. Yeah, like I, I, I can't believe I didn't know that. It's like, it's all together and like all this history in such little areas. I don't know, I'm like, whoa, right now. So we're definitely gonna watch Little Women. I wanna watch Little Women tonight. Okay. A. Bronson Alcott, Louisa May Alcott's father, who was a progressive educator and philosopher, had this building constructed in 1880. So A. Bronson Alcott co-founded the first successful adult education center and co-founded it with Ralph Waldo Emerson. That's so cool. 1880. Now we're gonna head over to the cemetery where Ralph Waldo Emerson is actually buried. It's the Sleepy Hollow Cemetery and it's just right close by. Oh, so it's closed? Cemetery's closed. What time does it open? 7 a.m. Emerson House is also closed too? Well, they're closed on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. So we do have dinner plans tonight and the cemetery is closed. So I think what we'll do is go to the Emerson House now because we want to show you all that and we're really stoked to go at or the same. Um, and then we'll just do Ember or the cemetery tomorrow morning. We'll do that. Man, this is a, this is a pretty big home. <laughs> it's this huge. Is, wow, this is really nice. Ryan's family are all East Coasters, whereas mine are West Coast. And so we're actually going out with dinner with them today. We're not gonna be filming up, but we're gonna pick up this Massachusetts tour tomorrow. And we're gonna show you some other cool stuff. So see you tomorrow morning. everyone we just got to the cemetery we got here really early this morning it's only like eight something 
which is pretty early for us to get somewhere. But we're at the cemetery. Brian's finishing up getting ready. And we're going to go check out Authors Ridge, which is a certain area of the Sleepy Hollow Cemetery near Boston, Massachusetts, that has a lot of the authors that lived in this area. We're going to go check it out. Hey, you look handsome. Hey. Want to go? Top of the morning to you. Top of the morning. You want to go infiltrate this uh, school field trip up there? <laughs> yeah. About 50 kids just got in front of us, so we're probably going to be there for a bit. I don't know, man. This place is dead. <laughs> I think it's really beautiful that Henry David Thoreau is resting here, so to speak, his body is, and Walden Pond is so close. I, I didn't have any idea until we actually came here, so it's pretty beautiful. I love going to cemeteries, especially like this when we get to see authors and just, you know, any famous people that have influenced our lives but we've never met. And then you get to come here and honor them. And there's something really energetically cool about it that I really appreciate. So it's, for, yeah, I love cemeteries. <laughs> That's a cool headstone. Looks nothing like anything else in the cemetery. It really stands out. I don't know what kind of stone this is that his plaque is on, but it's beautiful. If you're ever in the Boston area, I'd highly recommend coming up to Concord and checking out the Sleepy Hollow Cemetery. It's nice to walk around and um, a lot of history here. Yeah, it's really cool to see so many people that our lives have been influenced by, especially, especially mine, especially ours. Anyways, we'll see you all next week. Be sure to subscribe, like this video if you have not already. And do you want to say anything, B? Oh, hey. <laughs> what? History is cool. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you all next week. Bye. Bye.